Hi, I'm Megan. Welcome to today's live reading of Be True With Me by C.A. McConey, presented by Itsy Bitsy Book Bits. Join me. Prologue, Lauren. I've had trust issues all my life, constantly being passed off to distant relatives on both sides of my family tree and rotating in and out of foster homes taught me to fend for myself and rely on no one. You'd think I would know how to read people and protect myself, but in less than 24 hours, my life and future were ruined, all because I let my guard down and trusted the wrong guy. The one person who's always been there for me was Miss Renta, Renita. After a string of broken promises from adults and the trauma of being repeatedly abandoned, the soft-spoken woman with a backbone of steel became my hero. She's the only person who hasn't ever betrayed me. When I first told her all those years ago what my then foster parent was doing to me, she not only believed me, she got me the hell out of there. Then she went above and beyond the call of duty by adopting me, even though I was almost ready to age out of the foster care system. Under her strict but loving guidance, I completely turned my life around, graduating as valedictorian of my high school class, then heading off to college to pursue a career as a social worker. Just like her, I was determined to spread goodness and light into the darkest corners of society and be there for the kids like me who had no one to advocate for them. While at the university, I excelled academically, keeping mostly to myself since I'd always been a loner, focusing on my studies and working toward an early graduation with a degree in psychology so I could pursue my master's in social work. During that time, one person was able to crack my shell and work his way into my heart. Jake Kelly. He was my first and only love. Jake was, a ser Jake was as serious about his studies as I was, gentle, kind, and nerdy. Whenever I looked into his emerald green eyes, I felt calm and safe. But I'd ob obviously misjudged his character because in an instant, he crushed that little bit of trust I'd managed to build. At the beginning of my final undergraduate semester, I was the victim of a sexting scandal. Jake callously shared intimate pictures of me that spread like wildfire through campus. I couldn't go anywhere without being ridiculed. Devastated, I haven't let another guy into my small bubble since then. The walls of distrust that took years to break down immediately went right back up higher than ever. Determined not to let the incident derail my master plan, I left campus, completed my studies virtually, and with Miss Renita's help, enrolled in a different university to pursue my graduate degree. I shudder at the memory, unsure why my mind went there just now, when my cell phone rings. I glance at the caller ID as Miss Renita's name appears on the screen. Miss Renita, hi, I was just thinking about you. Well, that's partially true. Hello, child, how are you? Good, working as always. Now, now, as my grandmama used to say, all work and no play makes for a very dull life. I hope you're taking some time out for yourself. A date with a nice young man every now and then wouldn't hurt you either. Groaning inwardly, I'm not about to let on to Miss Renita that what or who I was just thinking about. Another fib forms before I can stifle it. Then I deflect. I get out every now and then. Don't worry about me. How are you doing? Can we have lunch soon? No doubt she's on to me, but lets it slide. I'm fine. I've got some news for you. I've decided to retire. My heart swells with joy. If anyone deserves a wonderful retirement after so many years of taking care of others, it's Miss Renita. Congratulations. We need to celebrate over lunch or throw a retirement party. Is someone planning one for you? My hearty laugh travels across the phone and warms my in her hearty laugh travels across the phone and warms my insides. I suppose someone's planning it and I'll act surprised, but my dear, you know, I'm not one to give goodbye speeches or hang plaques on the wall. It's time for me to walk out the door and let someone younger take the reins. Plus, I've got some traveling to do, time to see the world. Well, you certainly deserve all the recognition you receive and the opportunity to travel or do whatever you like instead of putting everyone else first. You've done that for as long as I can remember. I speak past the lump forming in my throat. You've changed my life and I will never forget it. It's why I do what I do. I know, child, and that's why I'm calling you now. I want you to take my place. What? I didn't see that coming. But Miss Renita, I like where I am and I enjoy my role as a community liaison here. 
I can picture her waving her hands around as she speaks. It's what she does whenever she's enthusiastic about something. It wouldn't be that much of a change. You'd still be working for Lee County, but based in Green Springs. Plus, it's more it's a more senior position. It's time you moved up in the ranks. Show them what you got. Confidence is not my strong suit, and self-doubt creeps in. I don't know if I'm ready for all that. Besides, your shoes are too big for anyone to fill, much less me. Bullshit. Don't underestimate yourself. You've always been a fighter. You never let your circumstances dictate who you are or where you want to go. wanted to go in life. I was just there to lend you a hand or remind you that the color of your skin need not be a stumbling block. And despite all that's been thrown your way, you still rise. You are more than ready for a supervisory position. You can do this. Besides, I've already recommended you. You just have to go in for a formal interview with management at the main office in Tupuelo. Hmm. A more senior position would mean more money. Money was never the motivating factor in my career choice, but when you grow up with nothing, money provides security and a nest egg for the future. With a higher salary, I could get out of my apartment and buy a little place of my own. Then I'd never have to worry about not having a roof over my head or going hungry like so many of the families I try to help every day. And I have another dream, one that requ will require a substantial financial investment. Maybe this is my sign that it's time to step up my game. I can do this, I tell myself in an attempt to boost my self-confidence. Okay, I'll go to the interview. Will you promise to have lunch with me after? We can go to that soul food kitchen you like on Main Street. Of course, child. Expect a call soon from the main office. And don't worry about moving back to Green Springs. You're going to love working here. Chapter 1. Lauren. It's been two years since that conversation with Miss Renita. Not long after, I settled into a new life in the town I grew up in. Although I keep to myself socially, I've enjoyed getting to know everyone here and serving the needs of a small town. No one seems to remember me as the throwaway child of an addict mother and a father who spent most of his adult life in prison. And I have a different last name now, taking Miss Renita's surname after the scandal that derailed my college studies. Christmas is right around the corner, and I'm still savoring the success of the holiday party I recently coordinated for the foster children and needy families in our community. It's one of my favorite parts of the job. I'm looking forward to a quiet evening by the fire tonight, sipping tea and reading the romance novel I recently downloaded to my tablet. Since I have no love life, I may as well indulge my fantasies with a book boyfriend. Just as I settle in with my ebook and a steaming mug of English breakfast tea, my cell phone rings. I'm not expecting any calls, so it must be work-related. Since I'm single and the office supervisor, I'm on call while everyone else in the office has the weekend and upcoming holiday off to spend time with their families. <clears throat> Miss, Miss Turner, this is Lee County Dispatcher, number 868. How can I help you? Sheriff's deputies have responded to a domestic incident with minor children in the home. They are requesting your assistance on scene. Even though I'm com even though I'm in my comfy sweats and basking in the warmth emanating from the fireplace, I feel a chill down my bones. I always dread this type of call as it brings back unpleasant memories of my own chi chaotic childhood. I don't want any child to suffer through what I have. Unfortunately, families in crisis don't seem to take a break on holidays. In fact, from what I've seen so far in my career, the stress of holidays seems to bring out the worst in some people. Looks like this is one of those times. Text me the address, please, and I'll get there as soon as I can. I end the call and take a deep breath to steady my nerves, closing my eyes and saying a quick prayer for the strength to face whatever awaits. 